Yeah, Evan, just what what goes into playing a team twice, kind of the, the unique challenges and, and things along that line? You know, um, it's been quite a while since we played LSU. Uh, I think both teams have gotten better. I think both teams have kind of uh, figured out their core group and uh, who they can rely on. So, uh, you know, everyone's going to have scouting reports on, you know, the pitching and the hitters. But, you know, I think it's going to come down to, you know, who's the more talented team and who can play better and, you know, who can uh, compete in a pretty uh, intense environment. So I, I think it's going to be a fun weekend for both teams. Troy, you got us? Can't hear you. You got you? Uh, all right, we'll come back to Troy, see if he can get his mic fixed. All right, we'll go to uh, <laughs> we'll go to John Wilkerson next. Evan, we'll be sure and tell Coach that you did a much better job than he did with today's avail. Um, but I also wanted to know, what was it like in the regional clinching game that you had Will Heflin start and get the win, Sean Hundley get the save, and you record the last out. I know so many guys had a hand in it, but when you look at perhaps the old guard of Vols, that was pretty cool to see so many of the veterans be front and center with such a big moment at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. You know, baseball can be poetic. Um, you know, Will Heflin, he's, he's pretty much came out of his shell this, uh, this season. We knew he was a talented thrower, but you know, for him to do what he's doing um, after an ACL injury, you know, it's pretty phenomenal to see um, a guy that has put in a lot of time and, you know, dedication into a program, get the success and the recognition that he deserves. But, you know, to be followed up with Sean Hunley, um, you know, both of those guys, they're, they're two peas in a pod. They love each other. Um, they spend a lot of time together and getting them two, two together around each other, it's like, uh, there's there's going to be a lot of laughs come along the way. So I thought it was pretty awesome to see both of them get the uh, kind of the one-two combo in that in that victory. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep that ball that I caught for the rest of my life because that's a, that's a pretty cool moment for, you know, this program. And, you know, I'm excited to, I'm excited to see the next step that this program can take. All right, we're going to try Troy again. Still having issues, buddy. All right, we'll go to Teresa Walker, and then we'll go to David Pascal. Hey, Evan, uh, this team has got such a knack this year for coming through with the big hit and in the clutch moment. Uh, you've had at least one or two yourself this year. Uh, what is it? What's the feeling when you go into the like the bottom of the night Friday night, uh, knowing that you need uh, four runs to, to to get the win and and finish that game and finish the comeback? What's going on in that dugout, and and why are you guys so successful at being able to come back like that? You know, there was a lot of guys after the game. They said they could feel that we were going to win no matter what. I, for one, was not like that. I was kind of, you know, pressing a little bit, kind of nervous because, you know, I've went through the regional um, two years ago and I, I went in the loser's bracket in the first game. And it's a hard, it's hard to come out of the loser's bracket uh, in a regional. So I knew how important that game was. And, you know, being down three runs um, in the last inning was not a good feeling, you know. Um, and it's it's pretty remarkable to see the advance that we put in, um, you know, in such a high pressure situation. Uh, Liam Spence, Max Ferguson and, you know, Jake Record for them to to start it off and, and get on base and find ways with, I mean, I guess Pete Durke as well. You know, um, it, it was pretty cool to see them um, be able to be relaxed and go up there with a, a good approach and find a way to get on base. But, you know. Uh, it's easy for people to to go in those situations and, and have high emotions and, you know, want to do, want to be the guy and want to, want to get it done themselves. But, you know, it's the people, the people that have success in those moments are the ones that can kind of relax and pretty much treat it, you know, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you can get your body into, into uh, the phase of uh, being as relaxed as possible and your heart rate to be, you know, as, as low as it can be. Um, those are the people that have success in that moment. And, you know, I, I think Drew Gilbert uh, is, you know, is probably as high tense as a person can be uh, in a lot of mo moments in games. But um, for some reason, whenever it's a big game and a big moment like that, he does a great job of 
of calming himself down and, you know, uh, getting in the box and making adjustments pitch to pitch. So I, I think that we have a lot of guys that go in there and in big moments we can relax. And, and I think that's when we find a lot of success in those big moments. Evan, piggybacking on the emotional part of those moments, given the number of walk-offs you've had and how every home run now means more and more, uh, how do you think you guys have handled the celebrations? Have uh, it, it, What constitutes taking something too far? And do you think anything to this point has been taken too far in these big moments? You know, there's a lot of people on social media that, um, that don't appreciate the way that uh, a couple of our guys have handled success, but Man, it's pure emotion out here. You know, you got two teams that are fighting for their lives, basically, um, fighting for, you know, their programs to, to stay alive. And, you know, whenever a, a moment like that takes place, Drew Gilbert will never experience that again. You know, no matter where, where he's playing in pro ball, you know, what team picks him up or, you know, even how far they make it next year, he will never experience that moment again. And um, there's a lot of people that will never experience that moment. So, it is pure emotion, and I think that's what makes this game much different than, you know, professional because these are college kids, and these are 19, 20-year-old kids that are basically, you know, a year ago didn't know where their fit was going to be. You know, they were, they were trying to figure out if they were going to be able to be on the team or, you know, fight for a spot. And I remember Drew Gilbert fighting for a spot last year, and, you know, as, as talented as he is, he was – he was not given anything, you know, he's had to work for it. And, you know, these kids, including myself, we work and we put in a lot of time to, to get those moments. And a lot of the times those moments we fail. So whenever we find success in those big moments, it is pure emotion. And, you know, even, even if I'm on the other side of the dugout, you can appreciate that if that does happen for someone, yeah, they have the right to celebrate and, you know, I think that's what makes the fan base so good. I think that's what makes the competition so good in college baseball is that these kids are really into the game and they really want to succeed. And when they do, they let everyone know. All right, Troy, you want to give this another shot? Let's do it. We're working All on right. it. We got gotcha. you. Yep. All right. Third time's the charm, hey, Evan. I just wanted to ask you about what you remember about facing Landon Marceau, Jaden Hill, and A.J. Labas in that first series against LSU. Uh, you know, the LSU staff, it's a pretty pretty talented staff. Um, you know, Marceau, he, he's he's legit. You know, he reminds me of uh, of Garrett Stallings a couple years ago. Um, he, he commands his pitches. Uh, he's a true competitor. And, you know, uh, the numbers speak for themselves. He, he's a true Friday night guy in this conference. And, um, if you're a Friday night guy in this conference, you're you're pretty talented. So um, these guys are going to be they're going to be wanting to win. Um, we know they've got a bad taste in their mouth uh, from the last time they came here because it was a close series, um, you know. And I think it's going to be two guys or two teams that are going to be competing and and trying to fight and um, trying to win this game and win the series. So uh, I think it's I do think both teams have improved, and I think. You know, starting with Marceau, I think he's going to come in and uh, try to shut us down. So I think it's going to be a good battle. All right, we'll go to Wes next and then back to Ben. Yeah, Evan, I was going to ask a little bit of, sort of about what David asked earlier. It seems like not just fans on social media, because they're always going to be upset if somebody, you know, celebrates a walk off or something. That's just how it is. But even a couple of coaches this year have come out and said some stuff about maybe the way y'all compete or how chippy things get. Do you think maybe part of that comes from y'all kind of coming from where you came from as a program, just trying to feel like, you know, you, you got to scratch, you got to claw, you got to compete to get from where y'all were a few years ago to where you are now? You know, a, a couple of years ago, there was there were teams coming in our place and, you know, they would let us know that they were better than us. And there was no fear whenever they came to our place. And, you know, and not just fear, there was no respect. And, um you know, I think that leaves a lot – that definitely leaves a bad taste in my mouth, and that's kind of why I'm a little chippy at sometimes. But, um, you know, it takes a lot to earn respect in this league. And um, uh, if you don't have respect, it, it, it does uh, leave you a little frustrated. And, you know, uh, it's kept, kept a lot of people up at night in this program when, when we don't have respect from teams and they think they can come in and, you know, um, 
pretty much take over our field. So uh, I think the times have changed. Uh, I think we, we've got a little, we kind of brought our, our big brothers along to the playground to, to take control and help us out in the fight. So, you know, I, I think it's kind of, it's, it's time for Tennessee to um, step up to the fight and, uh, I don't think anybody, including our fan base, are, are afraid to be the villains. So I, I think that um, I think that's what makes makes this play special is that starting with our coaching staff and our players, uh, we enjoy we enjoy getting in a fight and uh, we enjoy the close games and you know we enjoy the competition. Evan, in in baseball, do you think there's um, a clear cut advantage when when facing a second team? or 18 for a second time in a season, whether it's pitching or, or, or hitting? Do you think there's a clear-cut advantage one way or the other? You know, I, I do think you can get an advantage in those certain uh, certain moments because uh, I'm sure the pitching uh, pitching coaches will know uh, the scouting reports on our players, and I think it will be the same for us. But, um, you know, I, I think it's going to come down to, you know, who can, who can adjust in the game and who can find ways to – um, scratch across some runs, and um, I think it's going to come down to who can play, you know, better defense. And I think these are going to be close games. I, I don't, I don't see either team um, really, um, you know, running away with this series. But you know, that that's something that you expect in a super regional. There, there's a reason why LSU is coming here. Um, they're very talented. You know, uh, um, they went into Oregon and they handled business. But um, you know, that was to be expected from this conference because uh, playing in this conference, you, uh, you, you get accustomed to competing and being in big moments. And um, the more big moments that you're in, the, the better you learn from them. All right. We got, we got time for two more guys. I get Evan over to practice. So we'll go to Rick Russo and then we'll finish with Trey Wallace. Hey, Evan, talked to uh, Luke Hochaver yesterday, and he's pumped. And what does it mean to you guys, uh, uh, alum and players from all different eras, excited, really excited about what you guys are doing? You know, it really does mean a lot. Um, you know, uh, in a couple of years, whenever I come back here, I, I don't want it to see, uh, you know, the program going in the wrong direction. And so it, it is exciting to see uh, other alumni be able to, to have some respect and uh, be proud of what we've done. But, um, you know, I, I think that Luke Coach Haver and even Chris Burke and guys like that, they deserve to come back and be proud of what, we, what we're doing. And, you know, I, I think it's after the season is over, no matter what happens, I think we can kind of um, have a little smile on our face that, you know, we are building something and there is something that's, um, that's happening in Knoxville that, that we can be proud of. So I, I think it is nice to – to have the alumni that come back and be excited for, you know, what this program is turning into. And, you know, um, I hope that uh, we're doing them proud. So. Evan, you, you might've already kind of answered this question in the, in the past couple of weeks, but I, I wanted to ask it again, coming off Tony Vitello's celebration uh, this past weekend, what, what does it mean to a team to you guys to see the excitement out of him. I, I know you guys are around him every day, but to see him go into the crowd and, and react with the fans and, and running out to you guys and tumbling towards y'all and just the excitement that the coaching staff has, what does that mean to you guys overall as players looking up to him? You know, uh, I do want to coach at this level one day and, and seeing a guy like that have such an impact on his team and the community um, it's pretty awesome uh, because that dude, talking about pure emotion, that dude has got it. Uh, that dude wants to win, and he wants to win here. And um, I, I think it's exciting to see a, a college coach do things that not many other college coaches do. And personally, I think it works. Um, I think there's a lot of people that, you know, watch the way he coaches and even recruits, and they're like, yeah, I want to play for that guy because if I was a high recruit, that's the guy I would want to play for. Um a guy that wants to win and uh, you can tell he's got our backs in any moment. Um, he was just as happy. And for him to be as uh, the first one out of the dugout on Drew Gilbert's walk off Homer, uh, that, I think that shows that uh, he's not afraid to, to show who he really is. He's not afraid of, um, you know, showing everyone in national television, you know, the guy that he is and, you know, what, how much this really means to him. And, you know, I, I do, think that that works and you know um 
Uh, I like to like to look at it on a point of view of uh, I'm a player and I see that it does work. And, you know, uh, if I am a coach one day, that's how I would do it. And um, I think I think it's it's pretty awesome to see see a guy just show his emotions and, and show his passion um, about winning as much as he does. Awesome. All right, thanks, Evan. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you. all